This is the Ranger from the Newfoundland Knife Company. Uh, Newfoundland Knife Company is uh, based up in Newfoundland, Canada, and uh, has sprouted from a business uh, run by the designer of this knife, Jonathan Stiles. Uh, they're an outfitter for all your outdoor adventures and such, and uh, they do offer knives. And this knife he designed himself and had made by the premier American OEM Millet Knives in Idaho. And um, let me just say uh, right off the bat, it's been beautifully produced and uh, I've had it for a couple of weeks. You've seen it on Thursday Night Knives and you've seen it on a couple of the midweek supplemental podcasts. And uh, this past weekend, I had a chance to take it out in the back and thump on it. I live in Virginia and as I mention every, every spring and summer, the vines, we have Virginia creeper, we have grapevine, we have English ivy and a bunch of other stuff I can't identify. And I swear it's like an alien invasion every spring and every summer. And it crawls over the fences and just desperately trying to make its way to my house. And uh, so I'm always cutting it back. We also have a good number of trees and the uh, all of this ivy and stuff, just dreadful for the trees. Uh, will climb up the trunks and strangle the things out. So you really have to be vigilant and on top of it if you don't want your trees, you know, falling on top of your house. You got to cut down the vines. So that's one of my main outdoor um, tasks with knives. And um, well, this past weekend, I had a chance to take out a bunch of those, uh, divine a whole section uh, of the backyard and div and um take out a bunch of saplings. We have a bunch of sumac saplings that just pop up and um, the past few weeks I haven't had a chance to to do my weekly upkeep. Um, I went to Atlanta for Blade Show and then a couple of other things and we had a really rainy weekend. So all that combined over three weeks in the Virginia sun the stuff just grew like mad. So this week, this weekend, this past weekend I was out there for hours just cleaning things up. And this was the knife I had on my hip with this really awesome sheath. I'll, I'll show you, tell you about this sheath in a minute. Uh, Jonathan Stiles, the proprietor of, of Newfoundland, uh, Newfoundland Knife Company, like I said, designed this for survival, for camping, for general outdoor use. It also happens to be uh, really light and agile in the hand. You could use this as a tactical knife. Um, or a fighting knife, you know, that's how I always look at knives. Uh, that's a lens I look through knives uh, in general. And, um, but that's not its main intended purpose. This thing is a, an all-purpose outdoor knife and it really, really excelled. Um, I presented this on Thursday Night Knives and people went crazy about it. They loved the way it looked and they really liked the thin blade. It's an eighth inch uh, thick blade. And uh, I presented the question, is that too thin for a survival knife? And uh, pretty much everyone said, absolutely not. With that broad blade, it's an inch and a half uh, broad, you know, from, from uh, edge to spine. And it's a, a half height saber grind at that thin stock width. It is a cutter. And you know, what are knives for? They're for cutting. Um, you know... There are certain things you might want to use a knife for, like splitting logs to make uh, kindling and stuff like that, batoning. And you could do that with this, but that's not really this the intention for this. This is a slicer, a cutter, and um, I would say, in a pinch, a small machete. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's not machete length, but uh, with the width and with the... Uh, thickness and with that high thin grind this thing just swipes through vegetation light and not so light so those saplings I was telling you about we have a couple of uh I had uh, on the tree line in the back we don't we have two areas in our backyard that have uh, clumps of uh, trees and and ivy and stuff and and that's where these saplings seem to sprout up and I just like to cut them back and uh, I used this and they were, you know, about 
an inch and a half around like that. And this just went right through that green wood like it wasn't even there. And that's because, not because it has tons of weight behind it, like a big, thick uh, survival knife, but because it is thin and slicey and cut, just cut so beautifully through it. Uh, so that, the vines, and then we have a bunch of dead wood falling off. Uh, it's like we have this giant tulip poplar in the back. Very, very large tree. And there are a number of limbs that have been just like swords of Damocles hanging over the backyard for the past season. And, and they've been dropping. Um, we've had some rain and some wind. And they have been dropping. And once the dog has his time with the sticks, I cut them up and uh, they have to be a certain length for the county to come pick them up. So I used this and uh, for a number of these, even dead sticks, this thing just uh, with that thin grind, uh, just swiped almost all the way through them. And then the thicker they got, the more I had to use it like an ax and kind of notch it out. But, you know, I've told the story about cutting through a very large, um, uh, red oak, and very large, I mean, I don't know, uh, about a um, foot and a half across, you know, through the middle, uh, with a machete when I had a sharp axe there. A machete, the the um, uh, Ontario uh, Army machete just cut through it so much quicker than an axe did. And I found that this was behaving the same way. It's about well, it's it's a little thicker than that machete is, but that thin grind just I don't know just chewed right through the thick wood that would that had fallen off the tree. So yes, I know I'm not a hardcore outdoorsman and I'm not out uh, doing survival stuff and I'm also not fighting people with my knives, but um, I've had some training in that, and uh, so I understand what those parameters are, what you want, uh, what might be ideal. And um, I also understand what it takes to cut through um, some heavy vegetation. And this thing excels at both of those. Um, now, I talked to, brought up the tactical thing for a second there. Um, this very comfortable handle, by the way. I don't see you really getting fatigued with this. It fills the hand so nicely and it's shaped so beautifully and uh, executed by millet so so ideally um, but it also has a thumb ramp here uh, and that is in case you need to thrust this and it's got quite an acute point um, this thing to me uh, you know out there practicing my collie felt great felt great in hand now um, you know I wasn't dueling with anyone and um, exer you know doing collie exercises and and uh, those motions you know, it's it's theoretical, but when you <laughs> when you're practicing like that, you know what's too heavy, you know what's facile, you know what what kind of knife you can you can move around in certain ways. And this to me not only is a great sort of outdoorsy knife, but it felt really good just kind of doing this kind of stuff, okay? Getting in my little fantasy knife fights. Um all right, maybe I've embarrassed myself right there, but uh I think this thing is kind of a jack of all trades. Um, so you notice it's Cerakoted. Why is it Cerakoted? It's D2 steel, one of my favorites. I love D2. Um, so this uh, model comes in three different colors. It comes in red, black, and gray on the blade. And come to think of it, I can't remember the different handle colors, uh, but like I said, that handle is just, it's great. It feels so good in hand. And um, this uh, thumb ramp feels great there too. If you notice, it has a bit of a, um, a lanyard hole up front. Now this can be used to cord a lanyard around your, I wouldn't put it around my wrist, I would put it around the back of my hand here. One thing, uh, I do wish they put a lanyard hole back here. I do like lanyard holes on just about everything. And uh, one on the back would be nice because I like the idea of, not that I've, not that I do this myself, but I like the idea of stringing some sort of a tight paracord lanyard from the front to the back so that when you're doing things, you can kind of let go of your grip, use your fingers to do stuff, maybe roll up a cigarette, 
I mean, I haven't done that in years, but, uh, or do whatever you're going to do with your fingers, uh, fine, fine action or whatever, and have that still over your hand. Or if you're using it in some sort of way and you, you fear your hand might get fatigued and you just want that extra surety of having a, a, uh, a lanyard over your wrist, it would be nice, or over the back of your hand, it would be nice to have another hole there. Definitely not a deal breaker for me, but uh, would be a nice addition. Uh, feels great in this reverse grip. If you needed to use that for some reason, you had to, you know, slam it into a log to pry it open to get grubs out to eat to survive or something like that. Um, definitely feels good in that reverse grip. You can tell I'm not an outdoorsman from that example, right? I was trying to be very authentic there. Uh, here you have a, um, the choil here is a bit sharp. Now I've, I've tried to cut cord with that and I myself cannot, I'm not exactly sure of the purpose of this. I've seen this on other knives and I do wonder if it's for striking some sort of a, a ferro rod, but it does look like a pretty thin. So maybe that's for cutting a lighter string. Um, I don't know. I should, I should ask Jonathan. Uh, about that particular design feature. Uh, one thing about uh, the handles I like, I do like that you can remove them with these Corby bolts. I think these are Corby bolts, or they're just bolts, whatever. You can remove them and clean out the, uh, you know, dry them out, clean out the water, uh, the viscera or whatever. I mean, you could use this as a hunting knife and you might get some guts and stuff under there, some blood seeping in there. Uh, you can clean that off. Also, I like this little thumb notch here. If you're going to be using this in a scraping motion, you have a little area for your thumb to to uh, to lock in on the side. Um, yeah, just a really, really nice knife. I think I scratched that up a bit. That's cool. That's good. I, I left some of the, uh, I left the juice from the vines on here just to, just to show you how I was using it. Um, you know, for, for effect. Uh, here is the sheath. It's a really tough um, sheath and I like it. It's a combination of that sort of pocket sheath where you just drop the knife in, but it also has, it also has the uh, retention strap, which is nice. I like the fact that you can just drop the knife in like a, what do they call them? Pocket sheaths. So that you're walking around, in my case, the backyard, but say you're in the woods or whatever, you're walking around, you keep pulling it out and using it and putting it back, pulling it out and you, you don't need to keep strapping it and you don't need to like find the right sweet spot to, to engage it, say if it were Kydex. By the way, he does make Kydex sheaths for this. Um, I think those are a custom thing, but you can just kind of drop it in there, go about your business, you need it again, you just pull it out, no problem. And then uh, for extended uses, of, uh, extended periods of non-use, you just clip the snap and boom, you're done. Very nice, very stiff sheath. All right, so let me, uh, let me compare this to a couple of knives that fall in this category. For me, like I've mentioned before, not being a huge outdoorsman, I don't have tons of like camp knives and, um, and survival knives, but I have a few and um, a few that I've used in the back over the over the past 10 years. Uh, oh, by the way, this red Cerakote is really set off by the green. You can see here, complementary colors. So you're out in the woods or you're out in the, in, in the field or something and you drop it, man, you can see this a mile away. So you're not gonna be losing this knife in any patches of green here. Um, okay, so let me show it against some of my other outdoor uh, backyard knives, if you will. So this one is my most recent. This is the uh, Bark River Knives Boone 2. Just a classic uh, clip point outdoor all-purpose knife. Very, very, very different. But uh, I'm showing it because this does a lot of the same things that this does, but just in a different package. Different style knife altogether. Uh, here's one that that the Boone 2 replaced. Not that it replaced it, but this is uh, the Tex Creek. And I used this for m a number of years out back. This was the one that was getting all of the play. And uh, I love this knife. I really do love this knife. Haven't used it in a, uh, about a year now, 
But this one, you can see, is thicker. It's got a thicker blade stock and shorter and a thinner handle and just a different knife altogether. But these all seem to do the same thing uh, pretty well. Uh, here's one gift of my good friend Kurt. This is the Condor um, Hudson Bay based on a traditional pattern uh, used by trappers and, uh, you know, outdoorsmen and such uh, for several hundred years. This thing is a behemoth by comparison. It's very heavy and um, thick, but great for um, the, the heavier, uh, like chopping wood and stuff like that. This is a good knife to baton with um, because it's so thick and kind of wedge-like. And then lastly, maybe the most similar in construction is the um, RTAC 2. Okay, this is, this is by Randall's Adventure Training. Much, much bigger knife, but a similar construction in that it's a full tang, um, you know, full tang knife, and it's got, it's got the sandwiched handles and such, the handles that sandwich the full tang. But again, very different. It's bigger, much, much bigger and thicker and uh, less practical, way less practical, I would say. I mean, this is a great knife for much bigger tasks, but really for my purposes, all the things I've used this for, I could, I could do with this. Uh, you really get a lot out of that thin, slicey blade. You really get a lot of performance that, you know, you might not need a larger, fully flat ground wedge-like blade. Now, that being said, this isn't, this isn't overdone. I don't think it's overly thick, but uh, you can get a lot, a lot done with this. You can definitely get a lot done with this. Again, just look at this handle. Just so comfortable. Feels so good. And uh, millet quality, you know? So if you like the design of this knife, um, you can rest assured that uh, it's, it's really well made. Very well made, and I think it's a looker too. And I gotta say, it's my first red knife. I was surprised when I pulled it out. I was like, what is this? Red, wow. And I gotta say, initially I wasn't thrilled with it, with the color, but man, it's grown on me. I really, I really love it. I think it's pretty beautiful. So anyway, I've gone on at length. This is the Newfoundland Knife Company ranger outdoors knife outdoors it can flex in a lot of different ways so i would call this sort of a jack of all trades outdoors knife with a hint of the tactical or is that just me all right everybody thank you for watching